Okay, what's going on everyone? So um, so today what we're going to do is, um, since I'm working the PSAT, like I said in my uh, remind message, um, I'm going to kind of provide a little bit of a video and some guidance for you to kind of follow along and be able to go and do what you need to do. All right, so um, the very first thing that we're seeing here is our Schoology page. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and um, first thing is click on this form right here where it says today's attendance form. And what it'll do is it'll bring up this Research Biology October 29, 2020 screen. And what you're going to do is you're going to type in your last name, first name, and then is it a great day to have a day? Yes or no. All right. So after you do that, bring it on back here. And I'd like you to click here on the daily agenda. And when you click on the daily agenda, it will wind up bringing you to this page right here. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to click on this eighth block, um, Ed Puzzle on Cells. You're going to start with that. And when you get to Ed Puzzle, <clears throat> you're going to be doing this cell theory and types of cells video. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the daily agenda. Once you uh, go ahead and take care of the Ed Puzzle, all right, you can come back here and you're going to wind up clicking on that or I'm going to go through the cell theory thing. Okay, so go ahead and pause this video for right now. Go check out the Ed Puzzle and I'll see you back here in about, I don't know, nine minutes or so. All right, so we're back. So now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about cell theory. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and click on this link for cell theory. <clears throat> And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through everything that we're that we're talking about here with regard to cell theory. Okay, uh, we're going to go through a little bit of the history of um, how cells were discovered. We're going to talk about a couple of different types of cells. We're going to begin to talk a little bit about um, uh, the organelles that are inside of cells. Okay, so uh, follow along with me as I as I move forward. Okay, so. Cell theory starts really in 1665 with Robert Hooke, okay? And Robert Hooke was an English scientist, and he was the first guy really to develop the first compound microscope. And with his compound microscope, he was looking at cork cells, okay? And when he looked at cork, he basically coined the term cell because he thought, man, you know what? All of those things right there with the, the way that they're kind of segmented and kind of blocked off, they kind of remind me of the cells that monks stay in in the, in the abbey um, in his local neighborhood. So he called them cells. <clears throat> After Hook comes von Leeuwenhoek. All right. So a couple of years later, we're looking at the late 1600s, okay? Um, he was a curtain maker, all right? But he had this hobby where he would grind lenses. And he was actually able to um, improve the microscope, and he was able to perfect it by being able to use some of these lenses that he actually wound up um, <clears throat> grinding and, and, and making much, much better than what Hook had. And he was actually the first one to observe in this new compound microscope living cells, all right, so the living cells were actually blood cells, and he actually was able to scrape some bacteria off of his teeth and look at <clears throat> those cells underneath the microscope. So now we're going to move into talking about two guys, all right, both around the same time, early 1800s. Um, and we'd have uh, Schleiden and Schwann, all right. Schleiden is a botanist, and he was observing plants. Okay, and he basically was able to observe the fact that, oh my gosh, look at this, all plants are made up of cells. So right around the same time, you had Theodore Schwann, all right, he was a zoologist, and he was able to observe that all animals are made up of cells. So if you look back and forth, here in the lower right-hand corner, we see an animal cell, and here in the lower right-hand corner, we see a plant cell. And we're going to talk about the differences between those two here in, um, in a couple of class periods. So Schleiden and Schwann, very, very important. Now we go to Rudolf Virchow, 1858. And he was actually the first one to be able to observe living cells reproduce. So they um, copied their genetic material, they divided, and they created new cells. So from looking at that, he was basically able to say, all right, animal cells um, will only come from animals and plant cells will only come from plants. And he was actually able to observe that um, to provide that key evidence and reasoning behind the claim. We move on to Robert Brown um, in 1833. He was a Scottish botanist and using a microscope, he was actually the first one to be able to see the nucleus of a cell. 
Okay, so the nucleus is pretty much your control center of the cell. The nucleus in eukaryotic cells, so cells that actually do contain these membrane-bound organelles, um, the nucleus is where all of the genetic material is, is kept. Um, in a cell that doesn't have a nucleus, they have something called a nucleoid, which is basically means nucleus-like. Um, so it's this kind of place where all the genetic material is all kind of wrapped up like a, uh, gosh, I don't know, like a cord that you have to unwind because it's all kind of wrapped up on top of each other. Um, which leads us to the cell theory, okay? The cell th theory basically has six parts. The cell theory says that one, cells are the basic unit of life. Two, all living things are made up of one or more cells. And then all cells come from pre-existing cells. Okay, And then additionally, we add that energy flow, metabolism. If you remember from our unit on biochemistry, metabolism is just another word for the chemical reactions that take place inside of organisms. Well, that metabolism, the biochemistry, they happen inside cells. Okay, um, as we just talked about on the slide before with, uh, with Brown observing the nucleus, um, the cells do contain hereditary information. It contains that DNA, all right, the instruction code for how to build cells and build all the organelles and everything that are inside those cells. And then uh, this last piece is that all cells are basically the same in chemical composition um, in organisms of similar species. So let me give you an example. Um, I have a, uh, a three-year-old miniature schnauzer, and my sister has a two-year-old labradoodle. All right, they're both dogs, okay? Their species are similar, so their cells are going to be pretty much chemically uh, the same, all right? So let's kind of weave this into um, the eight characteristics of living things. So all living things do have organization with regard to their cells. Well, that's cell theory, all right? And that completely overlaps. Uh, all living things do have the ability to reproduce, all right? Just because maybe um, a, 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 an organism is sterile or there's some problems within the reproductive system doesn't mean that that thing is not living. Um, they have the ability to reproduce or they are coded to be able to reproduce. Um, metabolism, all right? Chemical, chemical reactions take place. This overlaps with cell theory, okay? Homeostasis. Homeostasis is the ability to create equilibrium, all right? Uh, heredity. All right, here's heredity, we see that. That is the genetic information that gets passed down from, from cell to cell to cell or from organism to organism. Responsiveness, okay, uh, how an organism, or in this case a cell, how does it respond to outside stimuli? Um, all living things grow and develop, and then again, all living things do adapt by way of evolution. So let's talk about kind of the organization of these things, the organization of cells and the organization of life. All right, so organisms can either be a single cell or they can be multicellular. Obviously, we're multicellular organisms. Um, more, multicellular organisms are going to be much more complex than single-celled organisms, and, and we have all of these different specialized complex structures inside of our cells and inside of our bodies um, that allow us to do more specialized things. So, for example, red blood cells, they carry oxygen. Muscle cells provide movement. We've got brain cells. We have um, skin cells, uh, cells inside of our bones, okay? Um, cells inside of our organs and our organ systems, all right? All are specialized for a specific purpose. So where does it all start? It all starts at the molecular level, okay? And we just finished our unit on biochemistry, and we're talking about, you know, the building of molecules. So molecules come together to eventually form cells, okay? Cells eventually come together to form tissues. Tissues come together to be able to form organs. Organs come together to be able to form organ systems. And organ systems come together to form us, or organisms. Okay, and then organisms actually interact with each other and the abiotic things uh, surrounding them to form an ecosystem. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about cell size. And um, there's a reason that we need to use a microscope to be able to um, see cells. All right. Cells are really, really small for a reason. Okay. And the reason is, is that um, the surface area of a cell and the volume have to be in a certain ratio in order for cells to actually be able to do their thing, okay? Um, as size increases, okay, uh, the, uh, the, the, the volume is gonna wind up increasing much faster than its surface area. And I'm gonna show you an example on the next slide. But basically, if a cell grows too big, 
okay? It does not have the ability to be able to fill its volume with the kind of nutrients it needs, as well as efficiently and effectively get rid of the wastes that are produced, okay? If the cell gets too big, it might not be able to take in enough food, and it might not be able to get rid of its waste fast enough, all right, to actually provide for that nice homeostasis um, and be able to maximize its nutrient intake while also maximizing its waste disposal. So here's what we're talking about with regard to surface area and uh, volume. So right here, we see a cube that has um, a one by one by one uh, dimensions, all right? So it's one unit high, one unit wide, and one unit deep, okay? The total surface area is we take the area of one side and we multiply it by the number of sides it has. Well, this is a six-sided cube and each side has an area of one square unit. So one times six gives us six square units. The volume is gonna be the length times the width times the height, which is one times one times one, and that gives us one. So the surface area to volume ratio is six to one or six. So now let's take a look at this big cube right here. So what we've done is we've increased the size from each side from one to five. So now instead of having a one by one by one cube, we have a five by five by five cube. So the surface area, each one of these sides is 25 square units. Multiply that by six and you get 150. So that's the surface area. The volume now though is going to be five times five times five, which is 125. So now what we're dealing with is we are dealing with a ratio of six to five, which works out to 1.2. So this right here is the reason why we have collections of cells like this. So these cells right here are occupying the same volume. We now have, notice how this is five units wide, five units high, and five units deep. Just like this one, five by five by five. But now they're actually broken up into 125 one by one by one cubes. Okay, so the volume actually stays the same. But now, because we have all of these individual cubes, each of which has this surface area of six, we're taking the number of cubes that we have, which is 125, and we're multiplying that by six, because each one of those cubes has a surface area of six. So we get a surface area of 750. This right here is the reason why um, a leaf isn't just one big cell. A leaf is composed of many, 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 many cells, okay? All of which are actually able to do their own individual functions. All right, so let's look at types of cells. So we have two different types of cells. We have prokaryotes and we have eukaryotes. Prokaryotes are primitive cells, very little internal structure. They don't have a nucleus. Prokaryotes, no nucleus. They're all single-celled. Okay, eukaryotic cells or eukaryotes, all of them are more complex. They contain a nucleus and they also contain um, many internal structures, all right? And those internal structures are called organelles, all right? They all have a membrane, okay? And there are many different organelles that each have a specific function inside of your cells. I'm sure from life science you learned that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Yes, okay, it is, all right? But mitochondria is a membrane-bound organelle, and that is basically where ATP is generated. ATP is energy, okay? So the mitochondria's specific function is to be able to create energy, all right, during the cellular respiration process. All right, prokaryotes, let's talk about them real quick. So they have no nucleus, they don't have any membrane-bound organelles, okay? Um, they are always single-celled. Okay, an example would be a primitive bacteria. All right, um, they have a really, really simple structure. They've got a cytoplasm on the inside. Cytoplasm is kind of like that watery, kind of um, almost gelatinous, but not that thick um, place where stuff can move in and out. And then the cell membrane, all right, the cell membrane is made up of those of phospholipids. If you remember, lipids um, provide internal structure, they provide buoyancy, things like that. So cell membranes are actually made up of phospholipids, so phosphorus and lipid together. All right, they divide by binary fission. Fission is the splitting of something, 
okay? So if you're talking about fission, you're splitting an atom. Inside the sun, we have nuclear fusion. So hydrogen atoms come together to form an atom of helium and energy, okay? So fusion coming together, fission going apart. So you have this bacterial cell like this, all right, that's going to wind up dividing into two new bacterial cells, okay? Eukaryotes, all right, they have a nucleus, they do have membrane-bound organelles, we've talked about that. Um, they can be single-celled or they can be multicellular. Single-celled, um, you know, like uh, a paramecium or a diatom or um, an, an amoeba or some single-celled algae, all right? Multicellular organisms like plants, like us, okay? Those cells actually wind up instead of just splitting in half by binary fission, they go through the process of mitosis, which we're going to get to in December. So here's a picture of some diatoms. Diatoms are these almost perfectly circular, single-celled organisms. And then here is a picture of magnification of some onion cells. All right, so we see that they have a rigid cell wall. You can see the nucleus inside there. You can also see one of those specialized uh, organelles. It's called a vacuole, which we're going to get into um, on, on Friday. So here is an example of an animal cell. So the animal cell, um, basically it has you know, three major areas. It's got the cell membrane, it's got the nucleus, and it has the cytoplasm, all right? The nucleus is kind of the hub. That's where all the genetic information is contained, okay? Inside the cytoplasm is where you can find all the rest of those organelles. And then you have the cell membrane, which allows things to move in and out of the cell, but it also provides um, some structure and some protection. Now, notice on this cell, this is an animal cell, and we go back to looking at our onion cells. The onion cells actually have a cell wall, all right? Our animal cells do not have a cell wall, okay? So, uh, I'm going to move you into doing something that's coming up next, all right? And um, I'm going to go ahead and set you loose on doing it, but I want to show you exactly what you need to do because now we have a brand new normal with regard to our access to explore learning or the gizmos, all right? So um, I'm recording this on Wednesday night, all right? And um, yesterday, I believe right after school or maybe right during my fourth block class, we were all working on the gizmo together um, and using everybody's old login that they used when they created their account at the beginning of the year and enrolled into my class. Well, the county has now established the ability to go through LCPS Go and you're automatically, since you're logged into LCPS Go, you're automatically going to get into gizmos. All right. So it actually created a brand new account for you. You're enrolled in my class. Okay. Um, but everything else that you have done is pretty much wiped away. So the enzyme stem case that we worked on last week, um, all of that stuff is gone, all right? Here's the good news. I'm not going to ask you to go back in and recreate everything that you did inside that stem case. What I'm going to do is I think the to point total may have been 58 points. I'm going to go in and everybody's going to get 58 points for the work that they did on that enzyme stem case. Okay, so um, when I when I discovered that last night, I was not necessarily a happy camper just for you guys, simply because you had put a bunch of work into it. Um, and now I'm not actually going to be able to see that work because it's just kind of out there and gone. All right. But um, so basically, here's what we got to do. When you go over to uh, LCPS Go, you're going to look for this. Okay, this is your gizmo and you'll click on it and when you get in there you'll get this single sign on it'll load the application it should log you in perfectly okay um, and while it's doing that i'm going to go back here to the daily agenda all right so this link right here will take you into schoology and when it takes you into schoology what it's going to do is it's going to bring up um, a google assignment all right, and the Google assignment will kind of look like this. It's actually very much like what Google Classroom used to be. So here is your one file. You'll be able to um, pull this file up, and it's this Cell Types Student Edition. So what you're now going to do um, is, uh, as soon as you um, are able to get into Gizmos, um, and as soon as this video is done, you can actually go and, and start working on this. So 
here's a bunch of vocabulary for um, for stuff with regard to what's going on in here. Um, you know, we're going to wind up talking about ATP and cellular respiration and photosynthesis and all of these different organelles and organelle um, organelle types and organelle names and stuff like that. But the first thing I want you to do is I want you to be able to go through this, familiarize yourself a little bit with uh, with the virtual microscope in there. Okay, so you're going to go through the gizmo that's over here. Um, it's under Research Biology, 8th block. And we're going to be looking at cell types. So we're going to go ahead and launch that. And really what you're going to do is you're just going to go through. Now, it tells you when you're first working on stuff to like find the Elodea leaf. And it's like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what where I would actually find an Elodea leaf. Well, Elodea is a, 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 a an aquatic plant. But it can actually help you out by if you just click Show All Samples, it shows you where all these things are. All right, so the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to pick that Elodea leaf. Then you're going to take it over to the microscope. Okay, um, you're right now you have the ability to focus at three different magnifications. The first thing you want to do is you want to adjust the coarse focus. So just kind of figure out which way it needs to go to make it so that it's focused and it looks good. All right, there's your coarse focus. And then we're going to do some fine focusing. All right, so. It looks like it got a little blurry. Oh, there we go, okay. So this is what it looks like at 40 times magnification. So I can actually see some cells. I can see the cell walls. I see a little bit of green, but I'm not really sure what's responsible for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and get a little closer at 400 times. Ah, now I see the cell wall out here, all right. Right here, this guy right here is the nucleus. This big thing is called a vacuole. The vacuole is what's responsible for being able to bring nutrients in as well as expel wastes out of the cell. And all of these green things right here, these are chloroplasts, okay? And this is where photosynthesis takes place. If, um, you know, eventually when you get into activity part A and activity part B, you know, you can show the labels and, oh, look at that, it actually labels everything. Okay, um, and it's going to ask you to do some measurements. So let's show a, let's get rid of the labels. Let's show a scale bar. So this right here is 20 micrometers. All right, so 20 micrometers, I can, you know, move it here. So right there, about midway through this cell is 20 micrometers. So let's go ahead and see if we can get that to where it was. So I would say this cell, if we were going across, is going to be about 40 micrometers. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back in here to Cell Types um, Student Edition. You'll type in all your stuff here. This is going to be due on our first day of the second quarter, which is Wednesday, November 4th. Keep in mind that next week when we see one another, uh, we're actually going to be going back to the ABAB -A -B schedule. But since next week's uh, first day of class is a Wednesday, we're going to be meeting on Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, we will see each other on the very first day of the second marking period. So you'll see me uh, virtually on video here today, Thursday, October 29th, and I'll be back live with you tomorrow on October 30th. And then we'll have a long weekend, all right? And then Wednesday the 4th, we'll be back together, okay? So... Um, if you have any questions, please just reach out to me by way of Remind, and I will be happy to answer them, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can, especially while you are in biology, okay? So um, I hope you guys have had a great day. Um, it is a great day to have a day. So um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Talk soon.